This is a good chance to talk about rolling, which seems to be a, a, a very difficult concept often in this course. And combine it with another thing that often proves difficult, which is momentum. Uh, first of all, we need to be able to look at a rolling problem, identify it as a momentum problem. That often is one of those issues. The second issue is slip, no slip. And I'm going to do a couple uh, examples here. I have a uniform sphere of mass m and radius r that is projected along a rolling or a rough horizontal surface with a linear velocity v sub 1 and no angular velocity. Coefficient of kinetic friction is given as mu sub k. Uh, find the time t2 at which the vol sphere will start to roll without slipping and the linear and angular velocity of the sphere at time t2 apply the principles of impulse momentum because it's a time problem. So I have here, I have a problem where I have a force which is associated with the weight um, and I have velocity. There we go, force, a velocity I'm interested in and I have time. Um, relate both the linear and angular velocity when the sphere stops sliding, slipping by noting that the velocity at the point of contact is zero, and substitute the linear and angular velocity and solve for the time at which slide, uh, slipping stops. Or just keep saying sliding. Evaluate linear and angular velocities at that instant. So here's my picture. So I have here the initial system momentum, the external impulses, and the final one. And I've combined here both the linear terms mv1 and the angular terms ig omega1. Here I have the terms that are going to affect it, which is force of friction, normal force, and weight, and they're all acting over some time t, at the end of which uh, the ball is, is moving with a linear momentum mv2 and a final angular momentum of ig omega2. So in terms of the y components, I have nt and weight, which is really, I should call that mg. Uh, so weight equals normal force. Then I have exponents, or the x components, which is mv1 minus ft equals mv2. So there, I know the force of friction is really going to be mu sub k mg because it's slipping at this point, and that's how I've defined this problem. So mv1 is equal to something that we've been given, mv2, but I can calculate v2 as a function of v1 as minus mu k gt. And you'll see this function or this relationship in a number of different cases outside of this course, or out in this course and outside of this problem. And if I do moments about g, the only term that's causing a, an external impulse is this one right here. It's a friction force, and that should be force of friction, uh, TR e equals IG omega 2, because the initial uh, angular momentum of the system is zero. Mm -hmm. So if I substitute in terms, then I get all of this together uh, as mu k mg TR. This is IG for a sphere, a 2 fifths mr squared, omega 2. And I can say omega 2 is equal to 5 halves mu k g over r. Now, if I want to relate the linear and angular velocity when the sphere, the, when it stops slipping, then the velocities at the point of contact is the same. So v2 equals r omega 2, v1 equals minus mu k g 2, and that has to equal this value right here, and that time is going to take two sevenths v1 over mu kg. This is a problem with variables, so it's not um, that complex. Substitute for the linear and angular velocity and solve for the time at which it stops. There you go. So finally, I've got all of these terms, I've got the time, evaluate everything in terms of this, put it put this function up here. And I have the final angular velocity, omega 2, 5 halves, mu k g over r, 2 sevenths, v1, mu k over g. This looks more complex than it should, but really it's not a bad problem. It's one that very quickly sort of solves itself, and I find the angular velocity at the end of this. 
Not a very good uh, diagram, but V2 equals 5 sevenths V1. There you go. Uh, so it's not, uh, I sorry. And I'm just finding that by sort of saying, well, those two terms go away. These two terms go away. 5, oh, 5 V1, 5 sevenths V1 over R is my final omega. Here's another problem. It's a it's a more straightforward problem. I have a, 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 a cylinder that is rolling down a ramp. The ramp is given at theta equals 30 degrees. Mass of the cylinder is given as 70 kilograms. R of the cylinder, which defines the radius of it, uh, is 0.3 meters. The radius of gyration is 125 millimeters, and the static coefficient of friction is 0.4. Uh, kinetic friction is 0.3, and again, theta is equal to 30 degrees. It's released from rest, and you're asked to find omega after two seconds. So there you go. That's the motion. Uh, very good animation. Pretty exciting. Um, and there I have mass. I'm using kind of as a force analog, omega and uh, time. So force, velocity, time. This is a momentum problem. So if I put, do a free body diagram and I put the velocity as being uh, positive up the ramp, which is the traditional direction, uh, I have this sort of thing here, which is X is up the ramp, Y is normal to the ramp, and I have a counterclockwise rotation. I have weight, normal force, and friction force. And I can do a force balance where some force is in X and minus mg sine theta. Uh, plus force of friction equals mass times acceleration. And since it's rolling without slip as a first assumption, I can say it's alpha r. For force of y, I've got mass times acceleration y of normal force minus mg cos theta. Uh, and that is going to equal zero. And force normal is mg cos theta. Uh, sum of moments about g equals ig alpha. Force of friction times r equals ig times alpha. In terms of angular momentum, uh, if we look about point G, the only term that again is causing a moment, uh, moment is going to be force of friction, so FR times the time it takes, IG omega 1, IG omega 2. Since this system starts at rest, this is going to equal 0, so it's force of friction R delta T equals IG omega 2. Since IG is given as a radius of gyration, it's MK naught squared. So omega 2 and force of friction is mk naught squared r delta t omega 2 or in terms of numerical values 1.82 omega 2. In terms of linear momentum doing the same thing of the initial um, velocity I have force of friction which is in the positive direction I have weight which is in the negative direction acting over some time and this is the funny term because I expect that the rotation is going to go in a clockwise fashion. This, well, sorry, it's, it's going in a clockwise and it's going to slide down the ramp. This velocity is negative. It's in the negative x direction. So I'm going to imp impose a sign of minus vg2. So it's minus mvg2. This is starts from rest, put all the terms in. Also assume rolling without slip. And I have this final equation right here. I get rid of all my zero terms, and I get two expressions, one for omega 2 and one for um, force of friction. And I can substitute in, solve for the terms. I get uh, everything through there, uh, and force of friction is 50 point. I, I can solve it. It's a two equations, two unknowns. Force of friction max is mu sub s force normal, which is equal to uh, 237.9 newton. So uh, one question often that comes up is why is friction in this direction? Well, the velocity at the point of contact is zero and friction is opposing the motion or slipping of the cylinder. So the cylinder wants to slip down the ramp. So as long as it's slipping down the ramp, friction is opposing up the ramp. So this is the correct direction. So when does the switch occur to rolling with slip? So in that case, we're starting at about 30 degrees, which is in this diagram right about here. That's my force of friction. That's my maximum. As I go to higher and higher angles of my ramp, 
I eventually reach a point at about 70, it's about 69.5, uh, slip will occur. Every time you do rolling questions, you need to check for slip. Uh, the other thing is, and this is kind of crucial in the course, and it often appears uh, clearly uh, as a problem on final and midterms, look at how to identify um, momentum problems. And again, these are force, velocity, time. Thank you, and we'll talk again.